Greetings Terrarians, Chaos here. Today we're going to be taking a look into the basics of T-Edit. For those of you who are unsure of what it is, T-Edit is like a Terraria world editor developed by Binary Construct. It's not a mod in that it doesn't directly affect Terraria gameplay. Instead, it works more like a Photoshop tool for Terraria worlds. So you open up a world, you edit it, you save it, and then when you go into Terraria, you'll see those changes. But before we look into T-Edit, I just want to preface by saying that it is third-party software. It's good practice before using uh, anything like T-Edit or mods that you back up your world saves first, just in case something happens. In all likeliness, it won't, but it's always good practice to back up first. To download T-Edit, you need to go to binaryconstruct.com slash downloads. I wouldn't recommend downloading T-Edit from any other website. Uh, I prefer to download directly from the developers themselves. Uh, for example, I know somebody, a little bird, let's call him, I won't name names, you know who you are, who downloaded T-Edit from an external site and with it he ended up getting some viruses that gave him a headache on his laptop. So be safe, download T-Edit directly from Binary Construct. And I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. Once you're on the website, you're going to see a list of various different versions of T-Edit. And they kind of go alongside with the various different versions of Terraria. Um, obviously, there's only a few available for 1.0, 1.1, 1.2. And then you see several up here for 1.3. And you'll need to get the version of T-Edit that aligns with the version of Terraria that you're using. Uh, for most people, it'll be Terraria 1.3.5. Now here, you'll see we have two options. And the first option is a beta version. It says it might be unstable. Uh, to be honest, it's the one that I use most frequently. I just go ahead and jump into the beta. I don't really experience any issues with it. The bugs that I do find with T-Edit are... Uh, prevalent in every version of T-Edit that I've played, so I'm not really concerned about the beta. But if you are, you can feel free to go ahead and download the, uh, at the date of this video, 3.10 version. But I'm going to go ahead and download the beta. So once that's finished downloading, you can go ahead and close out your web browser and open up your downloads folder and you should see a zipped folder called T-Edit and the version number that you downloaded. So what we need to do is just right click on that and extract all. And I'll just put it straight into the folder right here. And then we can actually go ahead and delete that zipped folder we don't need anymore. If you want to hold on to it, you can. And I'm actually going to just drag that folder that we unzipped onto my desktop and I don't need my downloads anymore. So now that we have this folder here, let's go ahead and open it up. And inside you'll see a slew of different files and uh, and an executable in here. The only two things really of interest to us are settings and the tedit XNA. Now tedit XNA is the executable that will actually launch tedit. It doesn't need to be installed or anything, it just runs straight out of the folder. So if you see, if we uh, double click on it, after a brief moment, tedit will launch. And uh, the thing about this T-Edit XNA is that it only functions within this folder. For example, if I were to drag this out into the desktop and try to launch T-Edit, it'll think for a little bit, but nothing's going to happen. So it needs to be in this folder. If you want to have an icon on your desktop to launch T-Edit, then you just need to right click on it and then create shortcut. And then you can put that shortcut anywhere you want and you can rename the shortcut after you move it as well and you'll see if we use the shortcut uh, just a brief moment and then t-edit comes up the other thing of interest in here is settings you could open this with any sort of uh, word editor as long as it can edit xml documents i'm pretty sure most can Personally, I use uh, Notepad++ because it color coordinates everything. It just makes it easier for me to see. But again, you can use any sort of word editing tool to edit the settings in here. Now, um, I've actually had this open recently, so it's scrolled down, but you'll be up here 
you just need to scroll down to settings. And the thing of interest mostly to me is the shortcut keys. And here you have all of the tools in T-Edit and I'll be going over later in the video what these tools are. But this is the location where you could set your desired key bindings for said tools. You can't actually do it in T-Edit itself, unfortunately. You have to come into the settings here, but here's where it's done. And I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video and get my own uh, key bindings typed in. And once you have all of your key bindings in, you're just going to need to hit file and save. And that's pretty much all that I toy around with in settings. You could take a look through everything and see if there's anything else that you would like to change. Personally, I don't dabble around with it too much. I'm pretty happy with the way that T-Edit works. Oh, actually, there's one thing I do change. I uh, almost forgot. So just a little bit below the key bindings, you have your brush tool settings. And by default, the brush tool is 20 tiles by 20 tiles. That's a little big for my use. And it's also square shape, and I prefer my brush to be round uh, by default because I use a small round brush frequently. So I change this 20 by 20 to three by three, and I change the square to round. And that's the only other change that I make within T-Edit settings, just because I like to have a small brush uh, by default and even though you set the default in here you can change the brush size in t-edit itself so you could set it to whatever you prefer and once that's done just file save and go ahead and we'll try and launch t-edit and see what happens here and as you see we get an unhandled exception error and what the error means is that I had an error placed in the settings that the uh, program doesn't know what to do with. So I typed something wrong. I did it intentionally just to show you that if you mess around with the settings, you might get this error. And all that you need to do is go back through everything that you changed and make sure that it's in a format that T-Edit could recognize. Usually it'll have a little tooltip above the settings that tell you how you could type it. Um, usually I've run into this problem if I type in my key, my key bindings wrong because I do numpad. If I uh, hit a space in there or something that shouldn't be there, then uh, it throws this error my way. So the way you rectify that is you just go back into settings and you'll just delete all of your little errors. Those are my errors right there. And then once that's done, we could just get out of that and we can just launch T-Edit. We're done with that as well. And we'll just blow that up to full size. So once you're inside T-Edit, the first thing that we need to do is either create a new world or open a world. Typically speaking, I don't create a new world, but uh, when you do, this is what the settings look like. You can name it whatever you want. You can give it whatever seed ID you want to give it. That doesn't really matter a whole bunch. You could uh, change the size of the world, make it smaller or larger. It's not tied to the traditional three sizes available to Terraria. However, Terraria can sometimes act in weird ways when you do custom world sizes, which is why I don't really toy around with this a whole lot. But if you were to create a world, you'll see that it only generates with one flat layer of grass, one flat thicker layer of dirt, one flat, even thicker layer of stone, and then nothing in the underworld, nothing above, no resources or anything else. And that's just what a brand new T-Edit world will look like. But you could also open up your own world. So first off, I wanna take a look at this bar on the left here. So the first tool that we have is arrow. And basically this is how you interact with things like signs and chests. So if I were to come down here and I were to right click on this chest, you'll see on the right, it opens up this segment and it has a ton of empty slots. And I could just come in here and click on this 
and it'll pull up the menu of every item in Terraria and I could just place an item in the chest and tell it how many of those items that I want in that chest and then hit save and now that chest will contain the items in it when I right click on it. This will be limited with uh, the parameters that are set in Terraria so I can't tell this to have 999,999 fireplaces it will default it to 999 but you can set the inventory for chests using this arrow tool you could also set text for signs and announcement boxes by uh, right clicking on the sign using the arrow tool typing out whatever you want and then clicking save now you see if I right click on the sign again it will have the text that I just implemented and that's the function of the arrow tool it interacts with these chests and signs next we have the selection tool and this creates a box when you drag it around and this blue box is the area that you'll be working with so say for instance if I selected this area here if I were to get my fill tool and just oh sorry fill it with dirt you'll see that it doesn't place beyond the selected area uh, also I if I were to grab my pencil and draw you'll see that I can't actually draw beyond the dirt as well so that'll limit what I can do uh, limit the workspace so you don't accidentally go beyond it you could also use that selection tool to delete a segment as I talked about earlier. You can use that se selection tool to copy and paste segments, which I've also discussed earlier. So that's the purpose of the selection tool. Then we have picker. And what this does is it sets the tile or wall or liquid for your uh, brush, pencil, and fill tools. So it's kind of like the uh, dropper tool on a Photoshop or a paint application if you've used one. So when you have the picker selected, if I were to click, left click on this uh, tile that I have selected here, you'll see that it changes it to a clay block because this is clay and it also throws in the diamond gem spark wall in the background because that's what's in the background it also takes the brown paint because this clay is painted brown it also takes the shadow paint on the wall because the shadow or the wall has been painted with shadow so if i were to for example click over here you'll see that it now switches to copper plating the wall stays the same because the wall is the same behind the copper plating but you also see under extras that it selected actuator and actuator tile inactive. That's because these blocks, uh, let me just turn off the wire so you can see it. These blocks have actuators on them and they've been actuated so you fall through them. That's why these two options are selected. And I'll go into these options a, a little bit more when I discuss the pencil tool in a second here. But if you were to right click, you'll see that it only changes the bottom part here, the mask. And that's kind of your secondary selection. So if I were to right click out here, uh, you'll see that it sets it to sky and dirt. And that's something that the selection tool does if you select an empty space. It sets the wall to sky, which is basically like an eraser. It'll just delete walls and it sets the default tile to dirt block and if i were to right click back here you'll see that it sets it to clay and offline diamond gem spark block note that right clicking for the secondary selection will not change anything in extra and it will not change anything in paint so right clicking i won't get brown i won't get actuators anything like that the next tool that we have available to us is the pencil and this is going to be your primary draw tool. So with this, you'll be able to place tiles, walls, actuators. You'll be able to shape 
the bricks, um, you'll be able to paint them. So first up here, you'll see these check boxes. If I have tile selected, then I'm going to be placing tile. If I have wall selected, then I'm going to be placing wall. If I have both selected, you'll see that I, I'm actually placing both the tile and the wall. In extras, I have actuators and the actuation, uh, the actuation of the tile. For example, if I were to toggle extras and this extras box needs to be checkmarked if you want any of these changes to be applied. You'll see that these uh, tiles are darker, like they've been actuated because they have. They don't need to have an actuator in them to be actuated. And if I were to deselect that, and go over them again, you'll see it just reactivates the blocks. They're not activated or actuated anymore. With this is actuator check mark, you could place actuators in the block and not necessarily actuate them. So I have these here. So like if I wanted to run a wire through here, but I wanted them to be solid, that's how I would do it. But if I wanted them to start in an actuated position with an actuator on top of them, then I would just select that actuator tile inactive slot as well. So that's kind of how those work. And then brick style is just the shape of the brick. If you want it hammered to a half brick, you can do that. If you wanted it in any of the slopes, you can do that as well. It makes uh, for building hoik and whatnot extremely easy. And then you could just set it to full brick if you want. And that's the way that extras work. Then down here we have paint. And you could either choose to paint tile, wall, you could paint them both at the same time, or you could paint neither. Uh, none removes paint. And then you have all the paint options in here. And the same goes for in here with the walls. And again, uh, you won't be able to see, uh, for instance, if I paint this deep red, you won't be able to see that when you're zoomed in. But you'll notice if I mouse over it at the bottom, you'll see that it says paint, tile, deep red, wall, shadow. So I do have paint there and you can see it if I zoom out that red line, but you just won't be able to see it when you're zoomed in. Another thing to note is that you don't need to be placing tiles or walls to paint. For instance, I can paint a line in this clay just like this, but I'm not actually placing any clay. See, I'm not placing anything here, but if I come down, you'll see that I'm drawing paint. And that also works, like say if I wanted to paint walls, but place tiles, not paint the tiles and not place walls, I could do that. So now I'm placing these tiles and just to show you, I'll change it to white. So I'll place these and now you'll see below that the walls are painted white, but I only placed the tiles and the tiles are unpainted. So you can kind of just experiment around with this and set it to precisely what you want to do. Another option within the uh, pencil tool is if you click on here under paint mode, you'll see it says tile and wall. When you come in here, you could see wire, liquid, and track. And this is how you'll be able to do things like place your red wires, your blue wires, you have green, yellow. You could place uh, any combination of them at the same time that you want. Uh, note that you will only see the uppermost layer um, in this order, red being the bottom, blue being the second, green, and then yellow. So yellow will be shown over any other color. And if you want to see the other color wires, like if I wanted to get rid of yellow, I just click on display and then I could uncheck show yellow wires and then I could see green, uncheck green wires and I could see what's underneath that, etc., etc. Then we have the liquids. And this is the same thing as your tile placement, except it has water, lava, and honey. 
note that if I were to just place water up in the air like this, um, here, I'll actually just put this down for something later. So I have water that's just floating in the air right here. If I were to log in game, it will settle to the area beneath it. It won't just be floating in the air. So do keep that in mind if you draw something fancy with floating water. It's not actually just going to stay hovering in the air. When the game settles liquids, it will fall. And then we have tracks. And these are your minecart tracks. You could just place a row of normal tracks. And once you have that row of tracks down, you can come in here and you could select your boosters. And then you could select your pressure your uh, pressure plates or you could hammer the edges just like this which will uh, toggle the end pieces to be off bouncy or just stop you and you could also toggle the direction of your boosters with this hammer option the other thing that I want to look at for the uh, pencil tool is your eraser and it will erase whatever options you have selected. So for example, if I have uh, tile selected and nothing else, all it will do is erase tile. It won't erase walls, it won't erase paint, it won't erase actuators or anything like that. If I were to select uh, tile and paint, it would delete the tile and the paint. If I were to just select paint, it'll just delete the paint. Um, if I were to select walls, you get the point, etc, etc. I delete the walls. Next up, we have the brush tool. And as you can see, my by my default settings, this is a 3x3 three three brush. Technically, it's round shape. Uh, it's so small that it just becomes a little plus sign, but it's not a square. And so that's the brush size that I prefer. The brush works the exact same way that your pencil tool does just in a larger area so you see that i could place more tiles at once or i could delete more tiles in one swoop um same with walls you could do the same with wires uh you could do liquids tracks what have you so i could just have a wider area to work with and if you were to drag this, oops, I set that to a rectangle, you could change the shape of your brush. Um, so normally I have it on ellipse or round, but you also have rectangle and you have diagonals left and right. But if you were to drag the uh, slider up here it changes the size of your brush it could be as small as one tile or it could be as big as 200 tiles which is quite large if you look at the map if you wanted to have an oblong shape and not even uh, you just click on this button and now when you adjust the slider you'll see that it only adjusts one size not the other and you could set it to be whatever size that you want and just setting that or clicking that button again will make it to where both sides are even. You could also select this button, which will kind of make the tool hollow. So if I were to, uh, let's go back into, oops, let's go into tiles. If I were to just place this copper brick, you'll see that we have this gap in the middle now, just because I selected that. You could ad adjust the size of the gap like this by adjusting the uh, slider bar below here. The next tool at our disposal is the fill tool. And this works very similarly to the pencil and brush in that it places tiles, it places liquids and walls. It doesn't work so hot with wires. You only end up placing one wire at a time, no matter what wire you have selected. So I don't use it for that. It doesn't work so hot for tracks either. And there are some weird things when it comes to tiles. So let me just set this to dirt. You'll see if I have the fill tool selected and dirt, it will fill an area until it comes into collision with uh, 
something similar to what you have selected. So I have tile here and it will fill the area until it comes to collision with another tile. If I set this to walls and I just make a fill in here, it takes a little while to load because I'm filling in a massive space. You'll see that it fills in everything beneath it. However, if I were to just draw a box with some walls just like this and then use the fill tool, it'll stop when it comes into collision with other walls. So keep that in mind that it will go until you uh, it runs into no more space to fill. But obviously this box will not prevent me from placing a massive amount of dirt because the dirts are tiles and walls are separate. Now the fill tool also works with paints. So I can paint all of these tiles red and you can see that from the background here. And I could do the same thing with walls, but it does not work with extras, unfortunately. So if I were to grab the fill tool and I'd say I wanted to fill the world with actuator placed dirt. Well, it only places a single one at a time. Anytime that this fill tool is selected with extras, it only places a single one. It's kind of an annoying bug, but that's just the way it works. The next tool in the line is the point. And this is where you could do things like you set your spawn point. For example, if I click here, I can move my spawn point here. I can move my spawn point anywhere in the world that I desire it. And it actually won't impact the game at all. The game won't freak out if I put my spawn point at the beach or if I put my spawn point anywhere, really. Uh, something to note with the spawn point is that the tile that you're clicking on will be the tile that you stand on when you log into game. So for example, if I place, if I click here, when I log in, my character will be standing on top of these tiles. If I were to click here, I'll actually spawn with my character standing here and just fall one space. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, you need to keep in mind if you put your spawn point inside of uh, physical tiles, a nine square block around it will be deleted when you log in and it's just kind of the way that Terraria works. Then we have uh, the dungeon tool, and this allows you to relocate your dungeon with some parameters still set in mind. Dungeon enemies will still only spawn below sea level and will still only spawn behind natural occurring dungeon walls. Um, this will allow you to relocate the spawn point of your cultists then we could also do things like uh, move NPCs with the point tool. So if I go over here on this tab and I click on NPC names and I use this drop down box, you'll see that I have all the NPCs in here. I just select what NPC I want. I'm going to choose merchant. I'm going to add him. He's been placed near the spawn point. Now I can go up to this drop down menu uh, under point. And you'll see that I have the merchant available to me. And I can place him anywhere in the world that I want. The next tool that we have is going to be our sprite tool. And this will allow us to place any sprite that we want anywhere in the game. So you see that I have selected here a uh, sword shrine. And actually, the first time you open to edit, nothing will be selected. I've already had it open today. Um, so I can place this sword shrine anywhere I want. If I try to place it in a tile, it will delete the tiles in the space that it takes. So keep that in mind. If I try to place it in a uh, sprite just like that, it'll delete the tiles within that sprite. Keep that in mind. And it's a little, uh, it could be risky doing something like that. I covered it a little bit in my last T-Edit tutorial with uh, furniture clipping. So if you want to check that out, look into it, but just know that you might break the game if you do furniture clipping. So weigh the pros, weigh the cons, uh, check out that video. It might give you a better idea of what's possible. But with the sprite tool selected, if we come up here and we see sprites, we can type in whatever we want or type in nothing. And then we'll get the list of sprites 
uh, available. Note that if you type in nothing, it's going to take a little while to load because you're loading every single sprite in the game, whether it's obtainable or not. And here they are. So you could see we could do things like place furniture, but we could also place things like grass. We could also place things like trees. If you hold down the mouse in place, it just places a ton at a time. It works just like the pencil tool. Uh, you can place mushrooms, literally anything, any sprite that is in the game uh, as a tile set, you can place using the sprites. So to wrap up today's video, I want to talk about saving. In T-Edit, when you click save, um, I'll go ahead and save it. You'll see in the lower right hand corner, it flashed really, really briefly that it was saving and then world save complete. Now, the reason why that was so fast is because this is a small world. I have most of the tiles deleted and there's not a whole lot to it. If you have a really big world with a ton of tiles and walls and paints and wires in it, it can take up to 15, 20 seconds to save. Now, if you have uh, saving in progress in this lower right hand corner, then do not close T-Edit. If you close T-Edit while it's trying to save, you will corrupt your world. Now, once you have saved, uh, something else that I want to talk about, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of T-Edit uh, and bring over my worlds folder. There we go. So you'll see here a T-Edit uh, world save backup. So it's the name of the world, in my case, tutorial world dot world. And then it has this big long number dot T-Edit. And that's just a T-Edit backup. Anytime that you notice uh, while you're running T-Edit that it just starts saving out of nowhere. It's not actually saving the world itself. It's just creating a backup of your current progress. So if you wanted to use that backup, all you need to do is rename it and you get rid of the number, you get rid of T-Edit and you just change it to the name of the world dot WLD. And then that would be utilizing the uh, backup. And if you don't need the backups, if you're done with them, make sure you delete them because they can clog up your world folder really, really, really quick. So make sure you keep things uh, nice and tidy. It'll really help you out in the future. So that's going to do it for today's episode. Let me know in the comments if there's something that you thought I should cover. I do plan on going into more of the options and settings in T-Edit in a future T-Edit uh, 102 video. But if there's anything you'd like to see me cover regarding T-Edit, please let me know in the comments. I hope you liked the video. If you did, be sure to smash the like button, uh, leave a comment, and please subscribe to the channel. I'll see y'all later. Have fun experimenting with T-Edit. Happy building.